Some of you may have heard of Bachmanity Insanity. This is the, the RS7. It looks fantastic. This one's actually pretty loaded. You can see we have radar cruise, the baller wheels, along with scalloped brake rotors. Always a nice touch. And if you look at the window sticker, you'll see here 4 liter, 560 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque, Quattro 8 speed ZFA, 20 inch wheels, yada, 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 yada. This is actually a optional metallic black with Bang & Olufsen. Yes. Driver assistance package, comfort seating package, which I have in my A6, which I highly approve of. And well, actually we have the optional 21 inch wheels on this one. And we have power closing doors. And this really cool feature, Audi beam rings, $122,000. And uh, let me show you the interior. With the comfort seating package, you're gonna have a higher grade leather and Obviously, you're gonna have massage option and bolster adjustment capability, fully perforated leather seats, even the bolsters are perforated. Um, in this one we have, as it's an RS7, we have the special steering wheel with a flat bottom and carbon fiber. It's just really, really tight in this interior. I love it. How can you not like something like this? Obviously, we have paddles, which are mm, sort of like a metallic, with a black gloss finish on the inside. Just little touches that differentiate this from the S7. And we also have a black polished surface here rather than a flat surface, which you'll see in those A7s. We have only seating for two in the back. We have a center console area. We still have a very nice armrest. And believe it or not, this car has the ability to go to Costco. Let's see if I put the, uh, there we go. They actually have quite a lot of room. This is the advantage of having an S7 or an A7 because these are hatchbacks. Tons of room back here. Great packaging. We also have Bang & Olufsen set up the subwoofer in the back. We have a fit kit, because this is a 21 inch wheel set. Look at the size of the exhaust tips. These are resonators. So, while it sounds like a cheeky idea, the, the reality is um, no one can steal your exhaust tips. Because uh, that was my big fear when I had an AMG, is that anyone can just yank that stuff off. Not anymore, these things are built into the bumpers. Let's start this bad boy up. Okay, let's start it up. This is what it looks like, this is what it sounds like. By the way, for those of you interested, we're actually running on Continental Conti Sport Contact tires. Okay, we are in the 2016 Audi RS7. And in the RS7, what we're gonna do here is take it for a spin around the block. This has some get up and go. <laughs> it's still quiet in here. You know, I said the S7 was quiet. This RS7 is actually just as quiet in certain ways. Um, but it certainly has a rifle shot happening during gear changes, which I am a big fan of. <laughs> a little bit of sounds like backfire backfire the air suspension in this car is unthinkable with these 21 inch wheels you think this ride would be sloppy I am in dynamic mode and it is 
so buttery smooth in here. This puts the Cadillac CTS-V on notice. Of course, we already knew that because this came out before the CTS-V in the new incarnation. However, man, oh, ho. Uh, I think it's safe to say I am officially in love with this car. Oh, oh, oh my god! <laughs> nice! We'll make a left here and then we'll sneak onto the freeway. That's a little bit of a calmer acceleration for you. My phone's sliding around in here. I'm gonna put it in my pocket. It's got amazing torque braking here. So when the engine holds that gear as you slow down, you're, you don't even need to use the brakes. I, had a, I can only imagine what this must be like on the track. This is definitely smaller than the S8 Performance, and you know, for the price, you can almost get the same the, the, these either of these cars, the S8 Performance or the RS7. And the the thing about the RS7 is that it's a much more appealing car to someone my age because of the hatchback and the and the sex machine look. The, this thing, you get attention from everybody in this thing, and if that's your thing, then this is for you. Let's see what uh, the passing power is like. Yeah, it's there. I don't like pushing cars with slit with gloss on their tires too hard through these corners. Oh yes. This is a fully capable machine of everything you want it to do. Given that, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with an S7, you can't go wrong with an RS7, there's even the RS7 performance, and there's also the A7, which has a, a supercharged 3 liter V6 engine. It still has Quattro, and you can get all the features in these cars across the range. Obviously, the only exception would be the, the power difference. So it's really, what engine do you want, and then what options do you want, and then that will guide your path to which A7, S7, RS7, RS7 performance is right for you. I'm happy enough with just the A7, and the S7 to me was too quiet. This, this takes it up a notch. This is much better in my opinion. This is a very easy car to enjoy. Whether or not you're gonna drive it quickly, if you're gonna drive it on a track, or if you're just gonna cruise down at 70 miles an hour on the freeway, I think you can easily get comfortable with this car, and then at the same time, you can easily get excited. You don't always have to drive it in dynamic mode. You can simply go to car, and then change it into something like auto, and then that will loosen up the steering, change the air suspension settings, then dampening, and it will also adjust the, the, the transmission setting and the mapping of the throttle. It adjusts everything. This car becomes very adaptable to the situation you're in. And I can't demonstrate how it adapts other than, than giving you an idea of what the ride quality is like. It was buttery smooth on the rough road and dynamic, and now in auto, it's telepathic. I don't know how it does it or, or you know, what's going on, but it auto mode is, is a very compliant mode. It's complicit. It does, it does everything so you never have to pay attention. Then there's comfort mode, which dials everything to the easiest 
uh, lightest, smoothest setting. And even, even the steering though here feels a lot heavier than it does in my A6 TDI in the same mode. And that's down to, of course, the size of the tires and the compound of the rubber in the tires and, and uh, the weight of the vehicle is different, but it's the same platform in a sense. So comparing an A6 to an A7 or an S6 to an S7 is, is, um, is an okay thing in my book. Even in comfort mode, There is a sense of acceleration. It's obviously quieter, if you couldn't tell, and it's not as aggressive with the downshifting and the get up and go. So now if I put it in dynamic mode, immediately it downshifts, it goes into sport mode, and the torque is on tap. Wow. And it also does the backfire sounds. <laughs> so. Let's just do this in auto mode for a minute. Let's see how it rides over these train tracks in auto mode. Didn't even know they're there. You hear it, but you're not feeling it. Oh yeah, this thing has a burble and a rumble that the S7 doesn't deliver. The S7 was, was not really my cup of tea. It's nice, but this is nicer. But what makes it nicer is the more aggressive feel, less luxury cosseting, more in your face. This is what you want, this is what you get. So I wanna thank Audi of South Austin for letting me take this around the block. I haven't driven an S7 in a while and I haven't driven an RS7 before. So this is my first RS7 experience and I have to say it delivers. And if you're on the fence about an S7 or an RS7, I think I know what I would do. Thanks for watching.